At this point, I have the panel cut the length, cut the width, and I'm going to hem an edge on the uh, right side. Um, most of the time, 90% of the time, the panels are small enough they can go in a break. They simply go in the break and the hem could be bent in a break. Uh, some metals are too heavy for break work, so a uh, metal contractor will take a simple pair of hand seamers and just work his way down and just slowly bend up a three-quarter inch hem. My panels cut the length, my panels cut the width, and I've created a hem. So I have a, uh, a male side and I have a, a hem side. Um, and I have a hem at the base or at the bottom or at the eave to slide onto my, my eave. So each one of those steps is complete. So I'm ready to insert my first panel right under the inside hem of this number 15 gable trim and this panel will slide up and it will attach to my eave trim and it will also fit up against my gable trim. Uh, I can put my clips on clips to hold the panels in place they go every 16 inches so at this point I'll take again my simple hand seamers these are three inch they're a little small to have a, a bigger hand seamer would be a little better of an idea but I want to close up my bottom hem just a little bit at a time That'll give you a nice tight seal between your eave and the metal panels. And at this time, you can close up your gable, your number 15 gable. That hem on this number 15 gable is closing down on top of that leg that I bent on the right side of this panel. So what you're going to end up with here is a, a nice, straight, even standing seam, a, a correct standing seam, and it's a waterproof standing seam. I have a leg coming up three quarters of an inch there, a leg three quarters of an inch down, and it's proven to be a very nice method to trim off a gable end. All right, we're off and running. The hard part is behind us. The panels now. You just need to have, the, again, the high seam cut off, creating this flat section on this pan for your hammer. You want three quarters of an inch of material on the flat, which is hemming bar, slides to the end of the panel, and gives us our drip edge hem. The drip edge hem is very simple in that the panel slides, the female slides on top of the male, and the panel slides up into the drip edge. That's basically it. Uh, I can measure my panel at this point for cutting. I know uh, on this easy roof exactly where I have to be. So I'm going to cut this pan to fit. So I have a full 17 inch pan. I've hemmed the bottom to uh, meet my uh, drip edge. And Simply overlaps the uh, the first pan, um, female to male, and I'm going to attach the pan if I can hold it in place. Make 
Make sure the pan is tight up against your drip edge. Again, clips, clips are 16 inch on center. 16 inch apart. At this point, I'm going to hem this bottom edge. Just to tighten up our rather tight panel. And move to the next one. Alright, at this point we have enough panels on that we can uh, easily demonstrate the tools. This is a historically correct true uh, one inch field lock standing seam. There's two tools that are necessary to do this. This first tool is going to uh, bend the one leg down on this panel and it just simply goes along the roof under your metal panel to you apply pressure. Run the tool all the way up the seam. I'm right handed, so I'm holding it down with my left hand and seaming with my right hand. What that tool does is it takes this one lower leg on this panel and it folds it over onto the uh, male leg of this panel. So it takes that lower leg and just folds it over on top of that. So that's my first bend. The second bend, what I end up with is I end up with a T-shaped panel at this point. So I have to take this whole leg and fold that down as well. So it is actually double the amount of metal. It takes a little bit more pressure. But as soon as I get this leg all the way down, I'll take my second tool, attach it to the seam. locks on the seam. And we'll fold this second leg down. And create a straight up standing seam. Being a little sloppy dragging this tool across this roof because it is creating scratches. So a good mechanic would have something under the tool so that the uh, the tool so that the tool won't create scratches on the roof. But at this point, I have a nice straight up and down double lock standing seam. Just for a, a, a matter of time, uh, we're going to move on to the next part, uh, finishing this roof. This is a piece of uh, Z closure. Um, this piece is 10 foot long. Uh, we made this out of uh, another color so that it would be obvious as to where it's positioned on the roof. It's 10 feet long. The Z closure has to be cut to fit between each one of these panels. So I'm going to take this Z closure, set it aside, and measure my first panel. Cut my Z bar to that size. So this piece of Z 
closure will fit between these two hems on this panel. Now I'm going to cut two more that will fit between these two panels. So we're going to place our, I've marked each panel now for our Z closures to fit. Um, in order to make that weather tight, we have to place a butyl tape. This is a half inch wide butyl tape. It's a material that's going to stay sticky forever uh, if it's protected from the sun. And our uh, Z closure will protect this from the sun. So we're going to place this butyl tape directly across this line where our Z closure is meant to go. So the butyl tape will be under the, the metal Z closure. So we have our butyl tape and then we have our Z closure which is going to sit right on top of that and follow this line that I've drawn. The Z closure gets put on with two screws. It does sit above the seam so that the head wall can slide into it easily. Alright, now we'll go ahead and put on the other two pieces of Z closure. So we have our closure in place. It's been cut to fit between each panel. It's been applied on top of a piece of waterproof butyl tape. So we've created a watertight seal for any uh, air blown water, wind, rain to get up under the Z closure. My head wall uh, simply slides into the leg of these Z closures. And it's as simple as that hem hooking to those Z closures. Normally on a head wall application there's a screw that's going to fasten this piece of metal to a wall and then be counter flashed or stuccoed or sided to in one way or another. We're just going to close this hem up just so that it will hang on to that Z bar. Just so you get the idea of how that head wall is, uh, how it looks once it's in place. Um, so again, we have a real nice straight standing seam along this edge, very watertight, historically correct one inch tall standing seams throughout the rest of the panel, um, watertight seat closure and head wall. If this was a ridge situation, it would simply be more metal pans on this side and this piece of metal would have a bend on it in this direction where it would have a hem here and a hem on this side that would attach to that Z closure. Those again are basic concepts and installation techniques in our metal roofing panel.